Checking the levels. All right. What's up, everyone? Sorry it's been so long. It's been really busy. Had some. I needed a break. And uh, just had some stuff going on, too. Just had to do that. So we're back with an easy topic. Just some texturing tricks. Um, a month ago, a month and a half ago, I just uh, didn't feel like really working on anything, and so I just was doing environment textures and just busted out something really nice, that like really fast. And um, I don't know, just a lot of little tricks and techniques came together really well. Um, and this is stuff you've probably seen before, heard before. Um, but what I want to get across here is show it off a little bit, um, but to also check the levels here. Right, cool. Um, get rid of stigma surrounding it because I know I was adverse to it, adverse to it. Um, and basically that's just layer styles in Photoshop. Um, I have a really good friend um, right out of college, you know, he showed me some environments he was working on and he just used layer styles like crazy and it felt a little weird. Um, but then when I saw it like in game or it wasn't a game, I think it was for um, like an animation project. Um, it looked great. Like, you know, I couldn't tell the difference. Um, you do have to work a bit, or it's not work a bit, but, you know, there's a, a trick to, a skill to making it work with your style. And that, and that again, that's what I want to get across, that, you know, using layer styles, it can feel kind of mechanical, you can feel Photoshop coming out of it, but um, in the end, it's, it's really nice. It's just, it's so fast, and that's so important in game development. Um, you know, and just by chance, you know, I had already made this texture, but then, you know, Dragon Quest XI came out, um, and I just saw it everywhere. You know, it works really well for Akira Toriyama style, you know, the Dragon Quest style. Um, you see it a lot, just really basic, you know, layer effects that they use um, for their textures through here and through here. You can see it up close right here. It's just so fast. Um, and just getting a hold of it, a hold on it, just a really good skill for texturing. Um, you know, I was just really worried about my own style not coming through, but also just looking like every other game. You know, you just go and download textures and slap them on there and, you know, real world textures. And But if you do it right, you can maintain your style um, and you can learn a lot. Grab my notes here. So yeah, main thing, real texture plus gradient map plus layer effects. And that will just get you going for texturing. Um, hey viewer, so if it shows anybody here, try and glance at the chat. Um, I may miss it. I'm trying to remember to refresh it. I still have issues where if I don't refresh it, then the chat won't come up. Um, so specifically we're going to do some decorative stone you know it's what i had done um, i went back to a bunch of other textures and just made it nuts um, that's kind of the aesthetic of this game uh, it's just so fast and it's really fun um, you know one of the reasons why i was didn't like the layer style stuff is just in my own experience it just it looked so mechanical and gross um and even when my friend was working on it you know i was watching him work and you know and just all i could see was the photoshop effects coming through but then again when it was in game it was looking super hot or in engine in in the animation so generally um what i'm getting at is Another trick is, you know, doing a lot of mirroring. Again, this was, I couldn't find a shot of it in Dragon Quest, but they did it a bunch too. Um, and it could get a really repetitive, you know, this whole thing is just one quarter here. And then it's mirrored and flipped. Um, but I saw it all over in Dragon Quest. And as, you know, you get nicer 
hardware, software for the, you know, whatever platform you're developing for, um, you know, lighting, ambient occlusion and stuff like that can really eliminate, um, that repetition in you know, the monotony and just having it in mind when you're like designing cracks and things like that, you can get away with it being that way, but it still looks good. You know, you kind of shy away from the edges there with your cracks and things, because then if you have like cracks that are like, I mean, right here, it's okay. Cause it's kind of messy. Um, so anyway, there's just little things you can do to work around it and for it to still look great. Um, okay, to get started, so usually, you know, I make a new quad, like in Unity, or excuse me, in Blender. Um, so let's... Trying to think, do I just work on a whole new thing or not? So I'll just go ahead and do that. Normally I would do this, you know what, I'm going to do it, because I'll probably end up using this in the game. So let's go ahead and click on that it up in there so you can see here this isn't the ideal way to work you can see all these alternate versions of it this is just where I did UV colors to give it lighting and so that's like when they're like trimmed out along here um, you know better ways to do ambient occlusion I'm still figuring that sort of stuff out so there's some the stuff I'm gonna touch on directly is good practice I like to think um, but like this stuff isn't necessarily So let's just go ahead, go into object mode, shift add, mesh, just make a new plane, let's go over here, um, I'm going to label it, period, like does zoom in in Blender, and it works up in here too, which is really dope, it's, oh, Blender's so sweet, there's so many little macros you have to learn, but it's just like each time you learn a new one, you're like, oh heck yeah dude. I forgot what this was called. Cement floor tile C, so let's do cement floor tile D. And go into edit mode with tab. You can see unwrap. We'll scale it down. Kind of match this one. I'm going for like sort of a trim. We'll, we'll get into it. Um, what I'm actually going to be working on. And I'm just getting a similar size. Um, probably don't need to have it as big, but... Scale it up. Over here. This is an old texture. I have it save somewhere else. So I'm just going to overwrite it. Um, let's save it. And then, so usually what I do is go in and make a new layer. Um, this is like a working file here. It has a ton of different textures in it, a bunch of different layer styles and gradient maps and stuff. Um, it's really, really good practice to make sure all your gradient maps or your color overlays are in their own folder here. That way you can turn them off Control shift C and like flatten your image and then maintain your gradient maps. That way they can still be adjusted if you need to, the gradient maps themselves. So this is supposed to be a beginner sort of thing, but I'm sort of throwing a lot of terminology out there. Let's um, try and rein that in so we can learn along the way. So we made that new quad. This is the texture we're using. You could do a whole new texture if you needed. Um, In to make a new layer. Usually do straight 128 across the board. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's about right here. You can see my old gradient maps coming through. I'm not using any more. And adjustment layers. Delete them. Bop. Save that. 
Alt R while you're hovering over the UV window. We'll refresh it. That looks pretty good there. Lined up. Actually, scale it up a little bit. It's good to give yourself a bit of a gutter, but a gutter is like outside of the UVs because when it, even in engine, when it's gonna calculate the pixel color at the moment, like depending on the rotation and scaling and flipping and things like, like a bunch of stuff can cause it to grab a pixel you might not be expecting. Like you might have like a black or white edge like along here and you might not want that. You probably, you know, it's not as you planned. Go ahead and save that in here. And it's taking a bit. That's sort of a problem, unfortunately. I like to have them all in one file. Um, but every time you save it, it gets slower and slower. So it can be, depending on what you're working on, I want to end up splitting it up. I wish there was a better way than having to split it up into new Blender files. Because it doesn't really matter in the end. It's just kind of handy when you're working on them, if you need to reference them, um, you know, to sort of make it match up, especially when you're doing like more complex environment stuff, but that's off topic. So go ahead, let's duplicate this in Unity. If you're not using Unity or if you're only working from Blender, you can just hang out in here. You don't need to be going back and forth. Go here, we have our new one. Right there. See, not exactly the same size. Um, you can reimport, remove component, add mesh collider. This will automatically import like the right. Um, is it upside down? It might be. Uh, collider. Normals. Yeah, maybe we should just do it in a new one because it's taking forever to load. We shouldn't be saving and loading that too much, but although we're going to do it one more time. So scale, four, one. Let's get that up, save it. Should be one of the last times we save in there, unless we need to adjust the UVs a little bit. Okay, so the thing I mentioned earlier is that, um, just so you can see it really quick, Give me a layer. We're not going to keep this. This is just to illustrate something. Actually, I'll show you this. We want it even, but I'm going to show you something. So you can do it inside of Blender here if you wanted. Go like this, shift D, scale X, negative one, flip, normals, A, shift D, scale Y, negative one. So instead of rotating it around or scaling it, um, you know, we're flipping it. That way it's mirrored along here in case there's some discrepancies. You know what I mean? It's like this one's here, this one's here. And that way, when it's lined up, it'll look better. If we didn't do that, rotate it around, you know, you get that, which isn't what you want. Um, but we're actually just going to do it inside of Unity. control to do snaps even when you're scaling like you can do scale snaps scale snaps hold V after clicking on the movement gizmo to do vertex snapping so I usually start with you can start with the texture if you want um, 
you know, it gets confusing because we're making a texture, but also when I say texture, I mean like a real life texture. So you can start with a, a real life texture right away if you like, just kind of depends. I usually don't. Um, I usually start sketching in some stuff. And I have this base layer that's an opaque gray. Do a new layer, start going a bit. Um, again, I had an idea of making a nicer trim for along these walls. So that's kind of what I have in mind. Um, but I'm not too worried with what we come up with right now. Um, kind of do want to match this a little bit where it has like some black in here. Sorry, it's lagging just a little bit. Uh, do Alt R to see. Oops, this is not safe. So I didn't line this up perfectly. Sorry, the controls change as you go from program to program. So you got to find like where this is. You can import your UVs, but when you're doing like quads and stuff like this, it's like it's not worth the effort, in my opinion. You might find it to be worth it. Actually, if I did a new layer. It'd be faster because then I can just move the line around. See, I think that's a little bit off. Yeah. Kind of pride myself in trying to get it right the first time. Is that way too far? So it's pretty even. And so it can be smart to keep that layer by itself. I'm gonna merge it to this one so that you don't mess with it. Just so you have like that reference point. Generally, when you're adding stuff on top of each other, it probably won't get messed with anyway, but just something to keep in mind if you have to do some redos. I'm just doing this to, for my own mental note um, as I work. So, You know, we're working in stones, so try and keep that in mind. Um, we're just sort of goofing around a bit. I mean, I guess I could go right into the layer stats. Usually I do a bit of sketching at first, but let's go ahead and just jump in. So what I usually do, it can be a little not as intuitive, um, but what I usually do is I do a layer style that is sort of like reversed. Like you might think that what I have going on is a layer style that let me just show you. Let's see if we have some. Oops. You know, shapes going on like this, whatever. Do blending options. Do like an outer glow like that. Um, and you can do it this way, but kind of depending on what you're working on, you want to do like an opposite. Um, the reason I do that is I usually want this part to recess more. And again, you could just have it so the layer you're working on is like light. But what I usually do, I just sort of prefer it. Whoops. They go all black. And then something important to note is opacity is everything on that layer. Fill is just the own pixels that you've already done. So that way you can have the fill be different than the layer effects. So what I do then, do some blending options. Let's actually carve into it really quick. So what happens now is that you actually design it by erasing like the layer. So real quick. Actually, I'm gonna be a little more precise with it. Alt, Alt to delete. 
go ahead and delete that. So then blending options. So the first thing I think of is the outer glow and actually make that normal blending. And so that's like, whoops, it's supposed to be inner glow. <laughs> anyway, it, it doesn't really matter. It's just how you like to work. Um, just something to note that you might think that you'd want to do like, I don't know. It just kind of depends. <laughs> And then the outer glow, which is actually kind of like an inner glow. You know, we do white here. And bring the size down a bit. So this is basically like the foundation of it all. Um, so you know, what we have is, you know, this sort of ambient shadow shape projecting out, shadow value. And then along the edges, you know, we highlight it a bit. Um, you can change it to precise depending on what looks better. It it depends. Um, something to keep in mind is the range. Outer glow is like nicer than stroke if if you're familiar with any of this because you can get strokes basically still by doing this by messing with the range. So just something to keep in mind. So what we're doing again is you know these are parts that we're going to be lifting up as we erase, it's creating, you know, these decorations. So the inner glow slash outer glow, however you do it, creates like the shadow value. Looks really nice. It's sort of an ambient occlusion situation. And then this one is like the highlights. This looks exceptionally good for top down stuff. When you start working on walls, I sort of just deal with it. I just kind of don't care. Um, but there's options for us to actually do it because you can see I have like some highlights underneath and that's not how the light casts. When you're looking down on stuff, that looks great. Um, but on walls, it can look a little iffy, especially like on these cracks I have going on. It's, like, it's not exactly how light casts. Um, but if it paints a picture, then it's fine. But there's some other stuff we can do to fix that. Um, so next, what I do is like when I'm working with the gray it can kind of feel pretty good but it's like there's always I usually jump into the gradient map right away <coughs> excuse me because it just really gives it way more character so what are gradient maps gradient maps and I've talked about them a million times but they're so important I use them for everything they take the value the literal value of the things beneath it value meaning the blackness or whiteness. And as you can see here, it's lightness. I think that's what that one is, right? Anyway, you've probably heard of like HSV, so this is hue, saturation, and value. So value is the lightness and darkness. It takes that and goes like left to right and will you know, if it's black, it'll do this color. If it's a darker gray, it'll do this color. If it's a lighter gray, it'll do this. And if it's white, it'll do this. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's just a nice one that I came up with for, you know, concrete and stone. So when you're on the gradient map layer, what you do, you paint with black and white, and that just that's where it shows up. That's not like you're not painting black or you're not painting white. You're, this is the mask for the layer. Um, let's go ahead and see like what color I did. It can be hard to get like concrete colors. Um, so let's go ahead and make a new one for us. If this doesn't look very good, I'm going to go back to our other one, but so you can see what it's doing. Um, usually it takes the colors you have. Oh, this must be what I had. It's a, you know, by default, it just takes your background and foreground color. Um, and it usually fills the whole screen unless you had a selection made. 
already. Um, actually, show that. So if we actually had that selected already, if we come into our gradient maps, do a new gradient map, click on that. Everything you can see, it applied it only in there. So I almost always, you know, stick with the black and white there. <clears throat> you know, full black is black, full white is white. And then I pick just sort of the general color I want to work with. Um, if I'm struggling, or if it's like a texture I'm not used to, I'll grab a real photo and just click randomly, just color select, try and grab, <clears throat> you know, a good color that's working pretty good. Um, you know, cement can be all sorts of stuff. So, you know, you usually just start here. And I'll go back in. The reason I'm going back and forth is, um, so if we're making like little adjustments and I do control Z, then it's not undoing like a bunch of stuff. So now we're just on this color step. So right there, you know, reds can be good. Um, work with that. Um, I'm trying to use yellows more, so I did on this one. So this might end up being similar. We'll just go ahead and do it. So we're gray, but then we just add a little bit of yellow. And then in here, you know, we go towards the black, but we're still yellow, but we should do like a bit of a color shift. So we can do green, we can do red, just kind of depends on what your style is. And this is pretty yellow already. We could saturate it a bit if we wanted. This looks pretty desaturated, so maybe we even up that up a bit. Might start to look like sandstone or something. So we may not like that, but what's nice is that we're always going to be painting in grayscale. So we can just go in and adjust that or just like slap on a new gradient map if we don't like it. That's the power of those. Um, it's just they're so fast. See, now that we have this gradient map set up, that these layers are a little extreme. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Bring the opacity way down. Bring the range up so it's less of a hard line. It was made a little too much. Got that. And go ahead and increase the fill a little bit so our contrast is better. So now you can see, you know, as we erase. You know, the layer itself is black, but we lower the fill, which is the opacity of just the pixels that we painted. And then you have these layer effects. We go on top of that to start designing. So again, you know, we're doing it with an eraser. Good thing to keep in mind, just sort of a general decoration sort of methodology is to have, you know, you have maybe your floral patterns or maybe some other motif like aquatic or animal or something like that. But then also have some like geometric stuff. Um, it can be used to contrast it. You know, we have all these like wavy things, and then we have these straight lines to give us some nice contrast. But it's just a good way to create sort of a design and unity, and um, I don't know, just something to keep in mind. Like if you're struggling, say you know we're doing some sort of like you know floral thing. This is really uneven. I'm gonna fix this. Another thing to keep in mind is that like the layer styles can kind of bleed over. Um, so you may need to adjust your UVs. So like if we save this, Alt R in here. And maybe some of that isn't quite right, as you can see right there. Over here we seem to be pretty good. We're outside of that range for the most part. Um, but we'll actually go ahead and pull it over a little more. What's happening is that like the shadow things, and you can mask it out if you really wanted to, but I just give yourself room for the um, layer effects to sort of trail off. Because as it ends here, you know, we have this black part coming in, the shadows that we made. And so that's why we have to give ourselves a little bit of a buffer. And in this other side, the problem is that I just needed to bring it over here. Again, that's why this gutter can be nice. If we save it, Alt R. Oh, that line went away. Um, or one line from before. It needs to be moved over. Look 
looking good. There might be a little bit coming through there. Um, it can be fixed. It's just something to keep in mind. Uh, go ahead. Say this is our decorations one. You might have multiple. So, you know, we just gotta think of something kind of what we want. Again, I'm thinking of sort of a trim. And so sort of a shape that maybe goes down the middle this way. So it's like lined up along the wall. It's hard to explain, but go ahead and cut into that. You can see you get some artifacts there, even with the spacing turned down all the way. So you may need to do some of this, go back and forth. Save that. Put up here to be. See how it's going. Let's see some artifacts right there. Again, that's something we can fix later. I grab these walls because the idea of them is that they here you know what I'm saying now like sort of a situation like that um, this line's pretty dark we might end up just like getting rid of that in the end it's <coughs> there just give us a reference and just a good starting point because they're like stone tiles so something like that you know what I mean it's it's gonna be going along the wall so maybe it could be up a little higher a bit thicker That looks, did it go the wrong way? Is it? Yeah, something like that. So now I have a better reference. Like this part's closer to the wall. So, you know, now it's just decoration. So you're just kind of having some fun. So if we could cut through, we can stop here. Um, you may want to do, you can see this is a real Photoshop where you have this like round edge coming through, so I'm gonna, like harden that edge. Um, I do a lot of like just using this selection tool, that way I do get those hard edges. Um, but you can always go back in, there's ways to fix it. So again, if you need to erase, you have to draw with the color that you're using. You draw with black here. If that confuses you, then just do it the other way. The reason I do it is because I usually want my like the decorations to pop back up. So alternatively is that you would just have your base layer darker. You would use white, and that way it would just be lighter if that was what you're going for. Um, here, delete here, delete here, bippity bop, something like that. See already that's pretty cool, we got some in and out going, and yo, that's pretty sweet. Nice. Honestly it looks way better than I thought it would, I was just like throwing something out there, so that's good. Any questions? Nope. And you're gonna go back and forth. Like with this one, I already had an idea that I wanted like a big circular thing that could look nice in the middle of a room. Um, Cause I had all these like, just these, you know, I had like these tiles and these tiles. They looked pretty nice. Um, but it was nice to have something that you could just like throw down in the middle of a room, give it more character. Um, so now we're working on that could maybe be, want to do something for a trim for these types of rooms. So my idea is kind of what I had going on here is that like right along the edge, it's real busy and decorative. And then it kind of maybe is less like as it goes out. That's kind of the concept. So like in here, maybe really concentrated decorations, but we'll see, you know, we're just we're gonna be working, finding out what we like.
I suppose, you know, for the sake of it, um, you know, we could be stuck here decorating for a long time. And we'll go ahead and do it during the stream, in this video. But for the sake of people just picking up the video on YouTube or whatever, get to the meat of some other concepts. So I mentioned before that, you know, I was having, you know, I was liking my textures, liking how the game looked. Um, but they can kind of feel like paper cutouts, even if you're like really proud of your texture. If you don't have some like real world like grit and texture type stuff going on. Um, I hate to admit it. <laughs> it just it looks so much better. Again, in the Dragon Quest ones, you can see how formulaic they were. It's just like grab like a sandstone texture, set up some layer settings, um, layer effects. They probably didn't even draw these. They just, you know, grabbed some like vector art, slapped it on there, cut it out. Boom, next texture. <clears throat> you know, added a gradient map or just a color overlay. And so let's go ahead and do that. For me personally with the concrete textures, one of my favorite aspects is here's a real extreme uh, example of it is these sort of like splotchy things like I don't know how to describe it where it's like this is really light and this is really dark um, it's gonna depend on your style like here's one that's not quite like that but I thought looked nice what you're trying to capture is just that grit, these little tiny like bumps and things like that. It'd just be way too hard to texture. I mean, I'm sure there's people who can do it, like texture, paint it by hand. And you can get brushes too. Like as you go on, you can get, um, you know, grunge brushes are usually called. Um, you can sort of paint your own. Um, and that's something I hope to get better at. Um, but if you can just grab some textures from some sites, if I download something, with the watermark, it means I really like it, but I haven't bought it yet. It is important to buy your textures or find them for free. Um, so this one's really nice. It had that effect. Um, not effect, but that sort of thing going on. Let's see, I had one that was taken care of. See here, same thing going on. Um, there's a watermark on this one, so I must not have gotten that one either. Um, but we might use this one because the watermarks are hard to see. Again, we're going to be buying our textures um, if they're not yours. But I really like this look again. Um, so let's go ahead and bring that one in. Concrete wall tech six. So I already had it open here, so just drag it into Photoshop. Bippity bop. Please. It seemed a little small. Is that really the size of it? Meme and me, son? I guess it's probably about that size. Go ahead and drag it over. And we're gonna bring it down. You could do overlay and keep it up on top there if you like. Got some of this going on. Um, you can just bring it below. It's almost the same effect. But again, overlay is really nice. You can just slap it on top. You may find that you need to do some adjustments. Like if you notice on this one, I really liked how this turned out. Um, but I had to darken it a bunch. So if you have like a shape that you really like, but it's maybe just like not working, don't worry. You can always mess with our levels. Let's go ahead and rasterize this layer. So control L or you can do effects. Where is it under? Dude, I'm so used to doing it. Image adjustments, yeah. Um, you can do levels, you can do brightness, contrast, lots of stuff. Control L is the fast way to get to it. A lot of times I want this black to pop back up because I really like that contrast like over here where I have these like white shapes popping up but it's like really smooth but there's like the tiniest bit of grit like this texture was just so good like it was just by chance I just grabbed it and I was just trying different things like this one might be a little too contrasty like not these dark and light values but along 
the edges of whatever. I mean, I wish I had the, the words for those things, but a lot of times I want it to be darker, but I also don't want, so here, just a quick thing with levels, it's just sort of similar to gradient maps. Um, it just takes the value and sort of like shifts it based on how you mess with these. Then the outputs is like, let's say, this is really helpful. Like let's say you're working on something and it's too dark but if you slap like some white on top of everything, then it's just gonna flatten everything. So instead you can crunch up your levels. So that way the darkest thing is actually only this dark, which can be nice to go back in if you wanna add like outline, you know, like line some things to create or even have darker shadows, just something to keep in mind. So that's already looking pretty cool. And again, because we have that gradient map going, like if you're just doing this, like, ugh, it's just so boring. It's just black and white. Um, but you throw that gradient map on there and you're like, oh my god, it looks so good. Even go ahead and saturate that a bit more. Shift this down a bit more. Create more contrast in the hues, the colors. Like that, like that. And that's another thing, like you can control so much with your gradient map. You saw how different the character changed, even as I just took this shadow value and messed around with it and see how much different character you can get it's just they're so strong like it's just the best thing in the world <laughs> um these highlights are a little light so i'm actually gonna control u and just drop the lightness down i got a little too dark Let's do it with the levels instead. As you can see that's getting really contrasty. So we can either, you know, do it like this instead. That's looking better. So what I did, it was too bright. And again, instead of like slapping black on it, mess with your output levels and it could give you a nicer um, way to darken it and things like that. Go ahead and save that so we can check it in our engine. It's already that's looking pretty hot. I just gotta say that's sick. Um, this is looking a little outliney, so let's go ahead and adjust that too. That's looking more like Dragon Quest. Well, we want this to look like Citadel Deep. You know, this is our game. I can refresh the chat. If there's anything, if your chat's not showing up, I'm sorry. Um, ask again. Jump on there. I'm actually gonna glance it how I did it on these ones save us some time um, what I end up doing in the end is I'll duplicate this our layer style one and then do like one more like big like really big outer glow that's really light to just give it even more um, sophistication I guess you can see the difference here like this looks really badass in my opinion so anyway, let's see oh this looks like it was 100% um, Guess it's just made it out more like so fifty one. Oh no, the whole thing is ninety percent. So again, you can go the fill is the actual pixels that you put down there. So if you do zero fill, then it's only your layers layer styles. But we want that black on there. But then you have your opacities. So you can kind of bring everything down if you need to. Um, but you have to remember that that's going to lower your fill. So maybe you're trying to lower your effects all at once, but then that's going to bring the fill down. So maybe you just bring that back up. Like that a little too dark. So yeah, I didn't need to go that light. Just get it. something that's looking good for you. The highlights aren't showing up very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and prove that. And in the end, we might go back and just, you know, undo that. But for now, I feel like they could be a bit better. Um, I'm gonna grab this texture layer. I'm gonna control click here to select that initial blocking in I did, Control Shift I to inverse select and then delete. That way 
we get rid of all that. Um, jump back in here. So it's looking pretty tight. Um, nothing too special yet. Um, we'll get to that. I actually want to walk around with it just to see. A lot of times I'll just leave the engine running too to like check stuff out. See, so yeah, that's pretty sweet. We'll fix that up here. This is really uneven. So. Go ahead and do that. This texture's pretty extreme. In the end, I might end up just going back with it, but I'm going to lower that a little bit. Back to our decorations layer. So I'm thinking, get rid of that. Maybe doubling this line up real quick. Um, there's some more, you know, I mentioned how we, let's go ahead and slap that texture on there because I want to get to the meat of it. Um, there's a few more things, but we would need it some actual textures, some decorations to deal with. Because you'll note, like on these ones, what I end up doing is doing some value stuff like along all the decorations. Um, I do some lightning and darkening, give it more character. Because right now it's really uniform. These are like really popping out. And that's how it'll start, but we can always go in and adjust it. Like that, check that in there. So that's not great, but I was thinking like, because that kind of betrays sort of what's going on right here. It becomes too messy right there, so you can't really see that like in and out weave right there. Maybe we just do something like this instead. So it's a little better. I don't know, I'm thinking like, I, mean, I want some flowers like hanging out in here. So real quick, I was thinking I would just have like some boxes. And then we'd have some flowers. This might not be right on the um, so I need to scoot it over is getting it. That going on. I don't know. I do like this though. <laughs> So it might just take some messing around. Um, again, for the sake of a video, someone might want to just get to the meat of things and then exit the video. Common thing I'll do. See this in a lot of games, actually. Got a new layer right on top here. Grab a softo, make it huge. Do 100%, just drop that in there. Just do like a circular like highlight. Go to the overlay layer, and then still like I'll bring it way down. And then do a new layer, something similar. You could probably do this with like a layer style and then you do a radial gradient, um, but oh well, just do it this way. Again, I like to work with 100% because you can always just you know drop the opacity. Uh, might be too much, but basically, the one that kind of goes like halfway, one goes all the way across. These are gradients from, you know, dark to light, basically. And if that's too much, we can bring it down. Because it's good to have, like, Again, if you have like a really nicer engine where your lighting is a little more sophisticated, ambient occlusion, things like that, you're going to get this variety anyway. Um, if you have like a universal, not universal, but just like a main light source and you have like a reflection of that, um, like Trails of Cold Steel does it, it looks really good. Um, and that'll give you that variety. Um, so already it gives us, you know, some gradient stuff going on. It looks really nice. You can see an engine that it's not looking very green. 
It's possible because we have blue light over here. Um, but not much of our color is showing through. So that's what's weird. When you're working in here, it's like, yo, this looks mad green. But like in here, it's like, it's not green. <laughs> so you can either go in and just ramp up your saturation, you know, go to the right, basically. Um, and then from there, you can, if that's too much, you can drop that down. A lot of times I'm lazy and I'll just duplicate that layer. That's what I had done over here. Um, but we'll just hold that and see. So it's like a little too much. And what you'll also end up doing a lot is again, you go on that layer, draw with black. I usually like to save this to the end though. So, you know, 20%. And then you can just do, you know, some splotchiness like that. So already you can see that's looking pretty cool. So this is looking a little maybe too metallic, um, but <clears throat> you know, that looks pretty sweet. The next step would be to add like another color and maybe tone that down like a little bit. Um, that's what I did here. It's hard to see, but like I have some orange here and some blue in here. It's really subtle, but it. I went to this right out of college. I went to this workshop that conceptart.org put on I kind of hated it. It was like, it was just not the scene for me. Um, but there was one talk and a lot of people like agree like this talk is really good. It's, he's like the main dude and he gives this talk on color. And one of the key things he said is that if you're not using all the colors, then it's not full color. And it doesn't mean you should just slap like a big old rainbow down there, but it's like even within something like this, if you have these like gold colors, you know, these gray colors, that there's other colors that come through and just having that on there just like makes all the difference. Um, we'll just go ahead and lower this a bit. Oh no, it's undoing all our other stuff. So stick to that. Any questions? Nope. Anyway, just something to keep in mind. Um, it doesn't match the scene very well, but it does look dope. I'm liking it. Let me think. I'd like to just get some quick decorations in there and then we can move on. Um, just not quite sure. I mean, we could do like, oops. this and then it's like a contrasted weave here or where... what oh okay yeah we're good that's kind of like the opposite you know what I'm saying it's like fine with it. please is that too much too much going on right there no, that looks pretty good. And then again, like, you know, we sort of line them up, you know, in this radial pattern. But in the game engine, you might be, you know, you're going to be lining them up. Like this. And you'll start to get new patterns. It's just the nature of tiles but it's just something to keep in mind you know you get some neat stuff so it's like it's going to be really busy in here but that looks cool you know that's maybe that's something that we want so I actually think these could be darkened let's just let's just get to it i'm just I'm fidgeting too much just gotta jump in here um Ah, there's one more thing. <laughs> Let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. Do Control A and delete it. You can see oh, it's not quite right. So yeah, just delete that layer. Basically, we're going to do like a cracks layer, a distress, distress layer. 
So it's really similar. Um, let's just draw some quick cracks so we have like a reference. Oops, let's do 100%. Cracks are kind of, I mean, it kind of depends, but I did it, honestly, just kind of bragging a little bit. I did a really good job on these ones where it's like they're straight, but they have a bit of a curve to it. And it depends on the material. Um, you know, that's maybe something that you see more in ceramics. Um, and you can just grab some cracks, make some textures and throw them on there. That can look good too. Um, but these ones, I don't mind having it look a little more illustrative. But anyway, just try and like, like a crack going through there. Maybe it's sort of broken up along this. And also it goes across it. On top of that, you're going to want some like big fat shapes like this. That's where like that, you know, maybe there's like a top surface that broke away. So it's sort of the same thing. Let's bring the fill down. You can do this or you can do like actually work with a gray instead of a black. So you have something like this. And then the reason you do that is so you're kind of losing the texture. That way it feels like a new material. I mean, you'd super want to do that if you had like, you know, where you have those bricks with plaster over it and then where the plaster's peeled away or broken away, you have the bricks behind it. Um, you do it a little more complicated. You do the same sort of layer style stuff, but then you'd have like a separate, um, you can do texture layer effects, but I would just have the texture just sitting there and then just crop it out based on like this layer selection, like control D like that. Only like blending options, same thing. Outer glow, I'm uh, gonna do white. Small, already like that looks so sick. Um, game graphics are a lot like stage makeup. So I remember like people, like back in the day, Soul Cover 2 came out and people were like crap talking the, like at the character screen like the versus screen and like the character like had just like everyone had like dark makeup kind of and it's because it's like stage makeup like that stuff has to look a certain way from far away so you kind of need to like push it a bit um then we have an inner glow which is going to be some shadow type stuff set it to normal so now that really pushes it in um keep it about there i will make it a bit bigger like that. And then maybe bring the fill down a little bit. And so that texture's kind of coming through, but it's getting obscured a lot more. Um, so now you just have some like cracks. There's a lot of different ways to do cracks. Um, do I have it on here? This one I took from like Breath of Fire 5. It's like along all their. Um, seams like like the stone seams like where the just like the edge of like tiles they would do like a bunch of cracks um and it looked really good so it's like along here just coming out like that this isn't looking so hot but kind of like that i'll show you where'd it go So you have kind of like that going on. Um, you already see that maybe the lightness is a little too much. Like from far away, you more see the, oh, I don't know, some of the angles, it looks pretty hot. So already, that's just another thing. Again, this is sort of jumping ahead. I usually save this till the end for the sake of a video so far when this goes up on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> have that. So I don't know, that's looking pretty good. So we'll just go ahead and go back to our decorations. Um, that about covers it. Let me check my notes. Um, we're gonna keep streaming and just work on the decorations. Uh, real textures and layer effects are your friends. So again, 
you can make them work for you and work for your style. Um, I will mention this one, right? Duplicate this layer. Get rid of the fill. You'll need to do this at the end. There's probably a way to set it up so it's on the same layer, but I don't know how to do it. Um, again, you save it for the end because you're going to be working with this layer and it's going to change. So anyway, we get rid of the highlights. Then I make that really big. Bring the opacity way down. So then there's just like extra bit. It's, you know, it's more sophisticated. It's not just, you know, a curve, you know, like a, a mathematical curve of like this dark to this light, or even just like a linear dark to light. Um, it's a little more sophisticated and it just it looks really nice. So anyway, so I mentioned that. Again, we'll go through here. Working with real textures will get you more familiar with picking real textures. Um, you know, you'll find out what works. So, because it can be hard when you're looking for a texture and just looking through Google Images, just trying to find something and just you get caught up in the nonsense. Um, so you get better at picking them, but you also just start to get more familiar with textures, like because you're focusing on it, and it'll help you for painting them and just you know for working with different materials and making things look like what you're looking for. Find textures that have interesting shapes and contrast. Um, you know, again, I mentioned what I like, or it's like this lightness and this darkness, um, but you may not be into that. Um, it just kind of depends what works for you. Keep the scale uniform. If you happen to need to like scale, scaling down is fine. But say you find a texture and it's just it's so good, but it needs to be a little bit bigger. A blurry texture looks better than an ununiformly scaled texture. If we do this, save it, go in here, you can just see that it's stretched. Like it just, it just, the human eye knows. So just make sure you're holding shift when you're scaling, you know, keep it uniform. And my puppy is scratching at the <laughs> chair. What's up, Ricky? You all right, buddy? Levels and contrast adjustments, we did that. Um, all right, yeah, so we covered all the stuff. Um, the one last thing, I guess, is along with the gradient maps, you can do just an overlay layer. You can use other blending types. Um, just grab something that's full saturation because you can adjust it. Ricky, dude, no. Oh my God, sorry. I hate to be a naughty. He's gonna step on the power strip and end this whole stream. Sorry about that. Um, for this step, I tend to use a blurry brush. Sorry, he's being really naughty. Usually isn't, but when I'm streaming, I don't give him any attention. So he's like, no. Down, go like this. You can see it's interacting with the yellow. It's giving us some weird, weird in a good way type stuff. Um, bring that way down. Control U to change the hue because maybe it's like a little too cyan. You hit the green or hit the yellow. That green looked kind of cool. Maybe more blue. It's a whole new feel there. Kind of liked a little bit more green there. Maybe just because it matches the green a little bit. Jump in there. And so you have something like that. It's a lot more interesting, especially once you have like all your decorations going. So anyway, for those of you who are ending the video at this point, um, thanks for watching. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and continue and work on some decorations here. So go back to our decoration layer. Go ahead and get rid of that one because we need it to match this one. 
So let's think. Um, glance at some of the other stuff in our scene. You know, really, if I'm making it be more of a trim, and it's just nice to have different types of shapes to work with, um, you could focus on maybe doing something like this. That's pretty cool. Something like that. I'll go ahead and do like the weaving type stuff that we normally were doing. Just blocking it in real quick. Just getting, oh my god, I do that so much where Glenn's like clones down. I think you can or I know. I think I know. Pretty sure. 99% sure you can customize the toolbar here. Maybe a little bit messy there because that's kind of, maybe that looks bad though, you know. Let's see. Yeah, see that's not great. So maybe we'll have to sort of change like Actually, I'd wanted to just do this. Sorry, it's hard to get it all in there. Do the opposite on this one. Kind of invading our other texture there. We'll have to fix that. Yeah, it's kind of neat. And it's nice that it's just like in these little spots where we have, you know, sort of some complex stuff going on. Um, so it's pretty hot. That's maybe a little bit too fat. Um, Ricky is being gnarly. But I'll just stick with it for now. Let's try and like actually decorate this. So this sort of stuff, you're just going to have to find some motifs you like. Uh, it just takes practice, you know, over the years as I've been working on this game. You know, you just get better at sort of just busting stuff out, um, making it more complex than I normally could in the past. Um, again, layer styles make things really fast. So for this sort of thing, you know, I usually do like the shape like this, and then you go back in and create some like... You know, like leaf lines, I don't know what you'd call them. Sorry with the stream and everything going on, it's kind of laggy. That was an intentional, but we'll go ahead and just work with that. It looks pretty good. Kind of coming around to do sort of the same shape but this sort of zigzag thing looks really cool so we'll go ahead and stick with it maybe do a little like pokey thing sticking out it usually ends up looking pretty good because we can't wait look in there so that's all right maybe we work with that a little bit if you get something good going Just like back and forth, back and forth with the shapes. We don't quite want that. Yeah, actually, 
actually like a flower right here might be pretty tight. It's kind of a neat spot for one. And a lot of the stuff might not end up bringing it in. Um, part of the fun of this is just it's just fun to see it come together with very little effort. So you can see all we're doing now is like we're not shading, we're not coloring, we're not doing very much of anything. We're just drawing some shapes. Um, if y'all didn't hear that, Ricky's mad. <laughs> He's scratching at the door. Um, I don't even know why I closed the door but I think it's easier as the restroom. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and stop the stream, but I will be back. Um, this will be good because, you know, the basics were covered. Um, as always, one last thing. Here, I had like a whole new color. So, you know, we can grab these decorations. Control click. Remember, it's the invert. So in this special case, Control Shift I. Go ahead and grab this gradient map and some light and just as an example it's gonna look really similar to that one go ahead and draw over that excuse me Do something like that you can do it on this one too or maybe it could be this one let's try that one which will save that um, it's sort of another reason to have um, sort of less saturated as our base one because then like this will really pop but it depends on what you're working with so then we have something like that going on which is pretty dope um, so yeah anyway thanks for everyone for watching um, the patreon support has been awesome despite not making a video in a while um, I will mention that someone requested I do a sort of character action basics so we go through all the introductory stuff that we would need to make a character action game um, I won't list all the things because I'm not sure what those videos will be but that's what we're going to be doing in the coming months um, so again thank you all for the support um, the stream will continue I just need to go let this dog out he's going nuts um, yeah thanks again let me know if you have any questions. Take care.